<laughs> How's it going, everybody? It's me, Waddles, and welcome to Minecraft Survival. We begin today's episode with a thank you to you. I love getting to sit and read through your comments, and it seems like a lot of you have been enjoying the recent projects, like the Creeper Farm and the Sugar Cane Farm. So, uh, <laughs> so keep it up. <laughs> I got a big one in store for you today. In the last episode, we made a species discovery. Then not just one discovery, like three different discoveries. We've got frogs now, baby. We're in the future, like 1.19. <laughs> but finally. Now that we're in 1.19, everything has changed. This flower pot right there, it used to be all about azalea, but now, now it's all about that propagule. Today's the day for science, but not just any science. A classic throwback, Ethonian science. We're gonna design a farm. Here in my super flat world, propagule time. And now that we have propagules, finally, we have access to mangrove wood, as long as we can actually farm the mangrove trees. Now, mangrove trees are unlike any other tree in Minecraft. There's a lot of unique things about them. First things first, we have this whole propagule thing. We're gonna design a farm, and we're gonna wanna work this into the farm somehow, so we always have propagules. There's the roots, which are really, really cool. We could probably come up with a use for those. There's the wood, which definitely, I have like, oh, off the top of my head, two different builds that I wanna do with mangrove wood, so definitely gonna need some of that stuff. And then the vines. If we could farm the vines from this thing, or at least maybe have the option to farm the vines from this farm, yeah, 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 I think that would be good. Before we design, let's uh, just get a quick lineup going on with the things that we might farm from this. So, uh, first things first, fine. The second things, uh, second, we need the leaves and then kind of like directly from the leaves, the, the propagules. I'm not sure if the leaves actually drop the propagules or what, so I guess we'll find out. Uh, the roots and then finally, the wood. I'm pretty sure that's everything that this farm is going to yield us, at, at least for the most part. We just want to keep that in mind. Okay, so, uh, look, every single time a Minecraft update is in development, like, in snapshots, you know, everything like that, I learn all about the features. Like, I studied them, basically, for the, for the snapshot videos and everything else that I make, like, around that time. A lot of profound studying goes on, and then months and months of time pass, and, uh, real life happens, and also, just other Minecraft things happen, and... <laughs> I, I forget mechanics. I, I forget about them all. You know what I say? If you don't use it, you... I guess you lose it. <laughs> so, so anyways, uh, this is the start of our farm mock-up today. My big question here is, let's say we had a propagule planted, like, like, right there. And then we had flowing water. Will this thing break by the flowing water, or will it just exist? Hmm, nothing. Nothing happens. Okay, well, this is big. What this means is that we could have standing water inside of our propagule farm, or mangrove farm in general. And then, whenever I need to use this thing, I just need to walk over and place it down and it just stops the water then what we could do is probably be able to bone meal this thing yeah 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 that grows up it'll be big or <laughs> small or uh, medium that yeah, it's not small this tiny all right so then in survival i would move over here and can i place that okay yeah yeah, yeah. i'm thinking for this farm we have like scaffolding on the call we use the scaffolding to reach the tree we chop the tree we get rid of all the wood and the leaves decay like normal then the roots we're gonna have to take those out on our own Moss layers, moss carpet. I completely forgot about that. We're gonna get moss carpet from this farm too. All right, so uh, real quick, we'll add that to the lineup. That's very, very important to know. Uh-huh, but over here, we chop the tree down, then everything will decay on its own. The water restores on its... What happened to the water? What's going on with the water? What is that? Hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. So it seems that when I planted the propagule right there and then bone mealed it, something went wrong with the water currents. And that's not even a full block. It's just level water. <laughs> oh, you know what it is. You know what it is. I think I figured it out. When we grow this tree, wherever the roots grow, uh, like right there, that turns the flowing water just immediately into water source blocks so it can be waterlogged. Hmm. That's very interesting. And also very annoying. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, man. That's too bad. So that's gonna be a little bit of a problem, but uh, to be honest, I was already surprised that the water didn't completely ruin the propagules. I, I had another plan in mind the whole time. What I was thinking here is maybe we could have like water, like maybe even just continuous water or, or almost continuous water sitting in a reserve on one side of the farm. And then all we do is that old fashioned piston farm trick. So we have pistons sitting down somewhere and then basically the, the pistons are raised up, you know, like cut off the water. Then I hit a power source, the pistons go down, the water spills out and flushes everything out of the farm. That's pretty simple and I don't think there's gonna be any problems with it. 
okay so threw something together really really quick just kind of a simple mock-up didn't really worry about aesthetics or anything like that so uh now we have pistons so we can toggle on and off uh that makes sense I would love to be able to use water for all of the item collection and speaking of all of the item collection ideally we get every single thing from these mangrove trees but uh, as you can see here this one's kind of like a it's kind of a wide load <laughs> if you know what I'm saying like like the trees are chaotic they, they can grow in so many different forms so what we're gonna have to do is make this farm at least big enough so hopefully like almost all of this stuff uh, drops every single time that means this thing is going to take up quite a bit of space. Now, uh, this is not something that I really am too concerned about, but what about containing mangrove trees? Like, let's say I were to put a ceiling above the mangrove tree, like maybe up here. Uh, we'll start with a 3x3 three three and see if this will do anything. Could I maybe stop the mangrove tree from growing too tall? Mm, let's see. So bone meal that and... I mean, yeah, it did kind of work, but I don't know if I really want to do that. If I could grow one big tree and get a ton of logs from it, I think one big tree is better than like two medium trees. These trees are kind of annoying, so we'll just let them grow however we want them to grow. Honestly, probably growing the trees like that will also conserve bone meal. Now, uh, thinking about design aesthetics for this farm, since we're going to plant the propagule on land, it doesn't matter uh, about water or anything like that anymore. But what can we plant this stuff on and what can't we plant this stuff on? Yeah, that's what I thought, unfortunately. So it's not going to work on that. How about on wood? Probably not. On stone? Yeah, no way. Sand? Yeah, uh, no way also. It seems like we're going to have to stick to, like, dirt and maybe mud. We could maybe use mud. Mud has to be a sure one, right? Like, it grows in the mud and the mangrove swamp, so mud's got to work. Yeah, mud works. Well, yeah, we could maybe do mud for, like, aesthetic purposes on the bottom of the farm. That could look good. I uh, look, I don't think it's going to work, but somebody's got to ask it. Somebody has to ask the question, what about the other types of mud? Does this work? Nope. Nope, that doesn't work. And a hopper? Does it work on a hopper? No chance at all. But look at a the hopper. They match, like, perfectly. The mud is confirmed to be iron. Over here, in our good old-fashioned survival world, we need to find a 16 by 16 block area where we can set this farm up. I think I have a pretty good idea, but we might have to make some adjustments. This idea is maybe right over here, just past the wheat farm. I was thinking behind the wheat farm, in like this approximate area right here, kind of hidden behind the hill, but also like accessible to the base. Yeah, 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 I think this might be good. On top of the hill, right over here that we're flying over, I have a different build planned, and... Actually, maybe this build today relates to that build directly. So we can't build there. Other than that, we could go behind the Colosseum and start expanding things this way, but I think I like that first spot. Mango tree farm, mango tree farm. That's one. And that's 16 right there. 16, and then we need to find the other limit, which is going to be right over here, this line of blocks. Imagine a giant square with this being the middle row. If I have water placed down over here, it'll flow right over to the middle and then stop at the middle, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Same thing is going to happen over there. Now what I need to do is figure out how to turn this entire farm into mud blocks. I think maybe the fastest way is going to be when we dig out the land, just go back and forth, then grab the water, run back over here, hopefully quickly before the grass fills in, and dump the water down. Then when we have grass over here, I think maybe the fastest way to get rid of the grass is just till it. We till the block and let nature take its course. Without any water sources over here, this will just turn back into dirt. And then same thing, I can pretty quickly just grab water from right over here, run back over here, and dump it down. But uh, I grass is so quick, it's so quick, it's way too fast. I think what I need to do maybe is like work in small sections, like don't dig up too much dirt. Otherwise, the grass is just going to fill in and poor Kev Kev over here, the hoe. Oh, Kev Kev, I don't want you to go away. And if I want to get serious about this operation, we clean out the hot bar like all the way. And I fill up the hot bar with water. Then me and you, we can actually embrace speed. Oh, you feel that? You feel that right there? You see that? Yeah. Yeah, well, that was speed. All right, so at this point, things are going pretty well. Over here at the farm, I've just about finished all of the mud that we need to put in. With a mud floor that is now fully finished, it's time to actually <laughs> take out some of the mud and set up the redstone. So the pistons, the pistons are definitely gonna sit on the ground right here facing straight up. I could definitely come up with like a fancier thing utilizing sticky pistons, completely hide the pistons, but to be honest, I kind of like that piston aesthetic. Like I promise, it's not just me being cheap or something like that. I, I like how pistons look. I think it looks pretty interesting. So two rows of pistons going like that. Now all I need to do is wire them up, which should be pretty easy considering the fact that I 
<laughs> Considering the fact that I that I have redstone. So guys, uh, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, we need to have a little talk. Um, redstone. Well, I have redstone. I, I have redstone right now, and I might have enough redstone to finish this entire project today. Um, but I but I also might not. We, I might need to take a break and, and go mining. It's been so long since I've done any mining in this world, and I've been using the materials like up and up and up. When it comes to diamonds, oh, we're set. We're, we're probably set for life. But when it comes to, like, literally anything else, lapis, copper, heck, even coal, uh, yeah, it's not good. Am I proud of the fact that we're, like, basically out of redstone on a day 1,312 world? Well, well, actually, yes and no. Yes, because that means I'm actually using the redstone, but no, because, well, that's not good. What I'm saying here is, if you guys have any ideas for some kind of caving episode, uh, please, kindly, uh, drop them down in the comments below. I'll be looking for them this episode. Maybe one of them will be the comments of the day next time. Oh, and uh, of course, I can't forget, today's scent of the day is a candle that smells like matcha and bergamot. It's kind of ironic, but this candle smells exactly like springtime, so if you're familiar with the season that comes right after winter before summer, um, yeah, yeah, uh, picture that. One, two, three, four. Four, five. That's that's basically it. It's time to mine. We come back over to the Colosseum, swap the wings out for a fancy chest plate, and then head right down into the closest mines that I know of, which is conveniently right over underneath the base. This is a giant cave system, and even more specifically, a giant cave zone that I I have literally never even caved down. Of course, the main thing that we're looking for is a little bit of redstone, so I'm gonna highly prioritize that. This doesn't count as our big mining excavation. Let's do this. Alright, this is what we're gonna call it. Right now, all of this redstone in the inventory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be way more than enough to finish everything that we need to today. Now, uh, the only thing I need to do <laughs> is uh, figure out where the where I came from and, and how to get out of this place. There we go. We're back. Swap the plate for some wings. Put all this other random stuff away that we don't really need today. Next stop, Enchanting Cave. Just gotta do a tiny, tiny bit of enchanting. There we go, that's good. And to now, redstone. Almost. <laughs> Couple small adjustments, and we'll be good. And now, redstone. <laughs> okay, I broke it. I, I, I broke the machine, but look at redstone. Redstone works. So this will be the on-off switch for the water system inside of this farm. That's perfect. Now, we gotta set up a border around this farm, you know, so we can actually put the water inside of it and actually start growing the trees. This border is only gonna be a temporary border. Now, I wanna harvest the trees and actually use the mangrove wood for the border, think it'll look great. For now, that'll do. Theoretically, if we had water dumped right over there, then, then if we got a little bit more water and dumped it right here, and then we hit this switch right there, all of the water should be cut off. If we hit the switch again and check out the water, they're perfectly in line, they're gonna flow right over here to the middle. Now we need to dig down right in here and set up another water stream. For me, hoppers are nothing, but for this world, uh, hoppers are lagging. And so I like to try and figure this out with water, which should be pretty simple. All we need to do is move it over to here, maybe simple ice boost, and then a little bit more water. Or if the items fall directly on it, you know what? What we'll do is we'll step it down and keep it moving. So with this system set up how we have it set up, that's going to move all of our water or items over to this spot right here. Then from that spot, we can start with the hoppers and the item sorter. Now, this has been a long time since I built an item sorter. I remember how they were, we're locking the hoppers and everything like that, of course, of course. Uh, I just have to consider how much space we actually need. What we might want to do is move in like a couple more blocks into the wall right there and then have a simple building or like pickup spot set up under the ground right here. The sorting system that we're going to need, as we figured out earlier, is going to need to involve one, two, three, four, five, six different things. A six item item sorter. That should be easy. You know, I'm not proud of it, but this might be the first comparators of this entire world. I, I think we're gonna need 
six. Well, actually, technically, I think we could get away with, I think we could get away with five. Those are the first comparators, I think. Okay, so let's think about this. First things first, we need to get the items out of this area. So I think we step them out maybe like one more block and then we do a sharp turn. I think I want to keep the item sorter as close to this farm as possible. And I'd also like to move it over towards the weed farm. So that means the next step is this way and yikes, eh, that's a problem. That's a problem. To account for that stuff going on over there, we'll make some small adjustments and actually just continue the water a little bit more. We'll have the system continue to this spot right here. That should be good. Okay, scratch that. Wait a second, guys. I just realized something. Then I'm on to something big. I don't know how I didn't think about this. Why in the world? Like, legitimately, why in the world? Tell, Tell me, answer, answer now. Mom. Why would I drop the items down to the ground and bury the items order to jump down into a hole when I could literally use a bubble elevator and shoot the items up to the surface right there and set up the storage system right up top? <laughs> oh, it's a genius revelation. This is gonna not only make everything so much more cool, but also so much more easy. Okay, so check this out. We'll have an item elevator that goes up right there. I put a window on this side so we can see it working from the farm. That could be pretty cool. The items go up and then we have a little water stream that goes over this way. We stop the water with like a gate or something. Then we move the items over, move the items over, and then the sorting begins. So that'll be one. So the final sorter thing that we don't actually lock goes all the way down over here. That's good. Then I realized that it's still sitting on the ground, so we make it taller. All the way up here or something, that should be perfecto. Now, if I can remember this correctly, which <laughs> I don't know if I can, uh, the next step we have is hoppers going into nothing. So we're gonna need six hoppers just shooting like absolutely nowhere. Then after those hoppers, we have even more hoppers, but this time the hoppers go into chests, I, I think. I'm pretty sure, wow, man, I, I should really build these things more. I love them. Go ahead and get rid of all those blocks and that one and that one too. We'll clean this up and make it look nicer, uh, of course. Now it is time to lock our hoppers. Uh, so we want this hopper to be locked. So I think we start with a comparator right there. Then I want to say we go like that. And then I think off the top of my head, maybe we go, do we go two more or is it one more? And, and then we go down for sure. Then in here we have a repeater. Oh, that's it. That's it. This is it right here. I think this is the shape. That that looks really familiar. I hope that's the shape. Allegedly, and theoretically speaking here, if this is the shape that we need, the next thing that we need to do is build up a little bit. We have a redstone torch down there. We have that repeater right there going that way. We have the comparator up there already. Dust, dust, dust. And then all I need to do is copy it again and again and again and again. All the way until the last one. Let's go for it. All right, so redstone, it's in. Now, we need to lock these hoppers, but to lock these hoppers properly, uh, we're gonna need the blocks that we're actually trying to sort here too. I think I can put the placeholders in for now and I don't that will really do any harm. Until I actually have the blocks that I'm trying to sort to actually put inside of that system, nothing matters at all. So, uh, here goes nothing. First mangrove tree of the world, one, two, three, four, five, and boom. Ooh. That's like decently sized, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's pretty big, so definitely grab the propagules. Not sure if they come out of the leaves, so we'll get those. We'll definitely have to get some vines. The roots for sure, the moss layers, and you, hmm. I think you actually have something that I need today. Uh, leather, this is perfect, good timing. Ooh, and that too. Oh no, it's just one, what happened? One, two, three, four, five-ish, uh, maybe a little bit more, just to maybe test it out, that should be good. The leaves right there, get some of those too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Roots for sure, those are cool, and oh boy, those mine fast, those mine really, really fast with that. Oh, that's awesome, <laughs> that's great. And that, didn't think about that with the mud, that might be a problem. Never mind, no it's not, it's fine, that's cool. You know, I might be able to, with that kind of speed, just use the roots as the scaffolding to climb up and down inside of this tree and chop this stuff out. Because this stuff, when I'm done, that's gonna mine instantly. A little bit more to leaves, can never hurt. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's the trick. That's the trick right there. Well, that decays up here inside of the hoppers. I think it's like, what, 45-ish items right here? So I think what I need to do is double the amount of placeholder blocks that I, or is it less? No, yeah, it's definitely that. 10 temporary, like holding blocks, and then the actual things. So in the first one, we'll do moss carpet. In the second one, uh, we'll do vines. And the third one, we'll go ahead and do like leaves. I feel like that makes sense. And this one, we'll do like propagules. I'm not gonna have enough though. And then finally, wait. 
Did I mess this up again? Wait, no. No, 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 no. Roots and then wood. Roots and then wood. That's perfect. I think that's exactly it. That should sort, like, basically everything out of this order. All I need to do is finish the water, get a couple more propagules, and we'll check this out. But there is one more addition that we're going to need to work into this farm. I think we could work the addition into the farm, like, maybe right over here. It's kind of an ugly-looking wall. We need a consistent way to be able to get propagules just in case they don't actually, like, drop out of the leaves. So, consistent way to get propagules, all I need to do is design something that looks, like, aesthetically okay with leaves right there. Then I can walk over to the leaves and bone meal the bottom to get the propagule, then bone meal the propagule to grow it all the way up, and boom. Uh, or, I grow it a little bit more, but, <laughs> yeah, you, you get the point. I think that's how that'll work. Once we get this in and then clean it up a little bit, maybe get the red wood in here. Truly, we have an all-in-one mangrove tree super farm. Let's finish this thing up. Well, guys, we made it. Here we are at the end of the episode. Before I show off our beautiful build today, I hope you all enjoyed the episode. If you did, remember to leave a like on the video. That helps YouTube send a survival series to other people. All right, so the farm. I am so happy with the farm, but I did make a giant discovery. So the mangrove trees, when we grow them, they actually will sometimes grow down below the floor. As you can see, there's a couple roots in there. This was a huge, huge problem uh, considering redstone wires. If you're setting this farm up in your world, kind of like I did here, remember to put slabs anywhere where you have wires stepping down because if you don't, roots will grow in the way and then completely mess up your redstone. It's not good. So like, uh, for example, over here, I didn't do it quite yet. Uh, this spot right here where we step up, if we put a slab right there, from my experience, that will stop the farm from ever breaking. Now, uh, the farm itself, I think I figured out a really, really good system here. So, uh, first things first, lever controls the water, went ahead and moved the lever a little bit. Everything works perfectly as planned. And propagules, I've been studying the tree, I literally can't tell if they're dropping the propagules from the leaves or if the propagules just grow on the leaves and then fall. So, here's the system. We have a couple leaf blocks sitting over here. Every time I want to use this farm, I come over here and bone meal all the leaves, just once to conserve the bone meal. Then I go ahead and give it a little bit of time and the propagules will eventually grow up. If I continue bone mealing these leaves, we'll always have propagules ready to go. Then, when it's time to grow the tree, go ahead and move a propagule over, bone meal the propagule, and it grows into a tree. Sometimes the tree is big, sometimes the tree is small. By giving these trees complete freedom when it comes to size, we minimize the amount of bone meal costs coming from this farm. I then go ahead and move into the tree and try and cut down as many pieces of wood as possible. Then I come back over here and hit the lever. The lever is going to let the water spill out. The tree should eventually decay if I got everything. I think I did. And then everything's going to fall into the water stream. When it does fall into the water stream, it flows over this way. However, one other problem that I wanted to point out with this farm that I noticed. Uh, with the water and the roots and stuff, when there's flowing water, sometimes on this specific block right here, we can actually have the water turn into a root. The roots will actually grow down into here and stop the water. Uh, to fix it, all you have to do is break the roots, but yeah, just, just something to know about. I couldn't really come up with a workaround for that one, so if you're big brain and you have some kind of fix for that problem, uh, just go ahead, uh, drop that down in the comments. That would help huge stuff. I wanted to strip all of this wood on the farm. I think the red is so cool. Now over here, up on the top of the farm, I just did a little bit of decorating right here, try and make it look a little bit nicer, and then sorting system. The sorting system is working out perfectly, but funny thing about it, I'll tell you in a minute. Now, uh, over here, I have a solid moss block. I thought that looked a little bit better than the moss layer. Then we've got vines, then we've got leaves, then we've got propagules, then we've got roots, and finally, the wood. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I was using dirt blocks as my placeholder blocks. I came back up to the sorting system after actually realizing that the roots were messing up the redstone. And the first thing my mind went to was more roots problems up here. But no, no, no. I was just accidentally dumping dirt into the sorting system. So went ahead and swapped the temporary blocks out. And so far, we're good. This farm is great. It's getting me lots of moss carpet. It's getting me prop eagles. It's getting me wood. Like, this thing is so, so nice. And the elevator, it's consistent, too. The things go out of the elevator, go way high up into the air, are consistently caught by the water, and it's just perfect. Anytime I need vines, anytime I need mangrove leaves, wood, anything like that, this is the place to be. The farm is so nice. So, guys, I would like to thank you all so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We're not done quite yet, though. We do have one final thing to do. The final thing is going to be right over here inside of the storage building. It's time for the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day. 
I'm so happy you still post survival series. These are one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube. Currently, I'm on episode 10. I love putting the series before bed. Thanks. From David D, which could be David Dobrik. First off, you don't gotta say thank you. I should say thank you to all of you for watching the series and therefore letting me make the series. Second off, that's an interesting point and it raises a question for me to all of you. When did you start watching the series? Was it on episode 1 or did you just jump in maybe with 1.19 or at some other point? One of my favorite things about making this survival series and really any other series that I've ever made is the fact that like the episodes could be watched at any time. It's like always good, right? Like a good old fashioned survival series, it never goes out of date. Whereas like a snapshot video, sometimes they do, right? Like snapshots change things, but survival is survival. So what episode did you guys start watching on? Was it episode one or did you join in later? Let me know down below. Big shout out to my patrons, Medical Boomstick, Bill Geek, Swoopy Louvers, and to Noodle Pork. Hope you enjoyed. That's the story of how we set up an amazing mangrove farm inside of our survival world. I'll see you all tomorrow.